And I'd now like to invite Matthew Beggs um, from Urban Growth, New South Wales, to come up and talk a bit about how these principles apply in practice, and in particular in the Western Sydney development context. And uh, Matthew um, is the development director for the Oran Park Town Project in Camden, which is in Sydney South West, and being delivered by Urban Growth New South Wales in partnerships with the Greenfields Development Company. So it's a, a I'll read it here, a solutions-oriented manager with over 26 years in the property industry. Matthew's got extensive experience in planning and delivery of large development projects, major project transactions, property transactions, business development and relationship management. So Matthew's at the, the business end of actually turning this stuff into reality. And so Matthew strives to deliver a balance of commercial and socially sustainable outcomes for all the different project stakeholders. I'm so. simply just a, a person who's hung around in the property industry for a couple of decades and a bit. And I've been on, known to go on a bit, so just chuck a pen at me when my time's up. I'll just touch quickly on this uh, new organisation or this rebadged, uh, it's not really rebadged, it is a whole new organisation, Urban Growth New South Wales. Uh, we've been briefed by government to unlock land supply and that sometimes means putting in the enabling infrastructure. Expedite housing delivery, which is, is all about the helping with the planning processes, uh, which is a role that Landcom was happy to engage in previously as the, as the old name of Urban Growth New South Wales, but I think we'll get an increased involvement in that area. Create de-risked opportunities uh, for, for others, and that can sometimes extend to investing directly where there's a market failure. Uh, and that will then in turn lead to investment opportunities for others. Uh, and probably the space that's more relevant to, the, to today, which is guiding smart development. And that's about providing or, or helping with some urban, stra uh, urban strategy uh, and tools. Uh, we've, we've got a number of guidelines, we'd extend those, and also to engage in an advocate. So engage with uh, industry, engage with policy makers, and engage with you. Uh, and advocate then what we, what we all then dream and aspire to as a, as a great city and a great, uh, a great state. And you know, this, this goes to the government's objective to make New South Wales number one again. Uh, so what I, what I will talk about is Oran Park Town. <coughs> Oran Park Town's in the Southwest Growth Centre. Uh, this is the structure plan that was drawn up uh, years and years ago uh, with a lot of involvement by Department of Planning and also the infrastructure agencies and also the local councils. The local council that we're with just happens to be Camden and if I've got a pointer here, bring your own. Camden, Camden is sort of uh, cuts across here somewhere. The Oran Park Town project is here, but most of the existing development, the 50,000 people that currently live in, in Camden, is down in that south part of Camden. So this, this area here, you're looking at 300,000 new people coming into the southwest of Sydney across the two main local government areas, uh, Camden and Liverpool. Uh, that plan sets out the broad planning for the infrastructure and services and also the land use off into the future. Uh, and with that coordination initially by Growth Centres Commission and now Department of Planning. Coming then to our vision for Oran Park Town. Oran Park Town is being delivered by Urban Growth New South Wales but also as mentioned by Chris in close collaboration with the landowners, the Perich family, uh, and their trading name with us is Greenfields Development Company. We did a, a fair bit of consumer research uh, about what Oran Park Town could be, and, and as a result of that came out with this posi positioning platform, which is Oran Park Town offers all the benefits of an exciting new town, uh, and so on. So it rolls off the tongue rather well, but the thing that can't be repeated uh, all the time is this new town. The early planning that we did uh, was uh, in terms of layering of, of the plans in no particular order. Uh, we did health impact assessment, strategic social plan, the master planning and also came out with a, a, a combined or integrated development approach and nominated a number of initiatives which I'll touch on later in the journey. Oh, uh, out of those plans, we identified a number of key 
key areas of intervention. Those were the areas that we thought if we don't do something, if we don't intervene in these things, then normal will just continue. So, so we want to make it better than normal or, or normal plus. So, so th and you'll see that later on in, in the presentation where we've picked a few initiatives out. Uh, in terms of town building, the idea really, um, if, if, we, if we look at what the consumers were telling us, is bring forward the infrastructure early. Bring forward all the things that you say are going to be in this town early and we'll buy into it. To do that, we need to lock in users, the ultimate users, as early as possible so they can contribute to the, to the planning process. <clears throat> and you can see here, uh, we've, we've built this. this. This was built in stage one. It's Wayne Gardner Reserve. Uh, for those who don't know, Oran Park Town. Oran Park is it was quite a, a well-known raceway. So a lot of the theming behind it relates to the former uses of the racing industry. We have a, a seven hectare retirement village. The user that we selected there was not just a case of a, 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 a for sale sign with seven hectares come and build a retirement village. We engaged them in the planning process and made sure we integrated with, with other users. This is a K-12 school, an independent school, uh, which, for which stage one is currently open. The first stages of the retirement village are open. You can see here all of this housing is now in and the future town centre, stage one of which I'll come to later, will be open in 2014. Uh, in terms of the big picture from a w walkable community was one of the key themes that we wanted to pick out and early on from the big picture planning point of view we set these walking and cycling trails up that's these sort of dedicated lines but also on the major routes making sure that we we allowed for those uh, if you like the, the the super highways for the pedestrians and keeping them in, in mind the whole time through so we planned for it early what what you can see there uh, is it, it sort of looks a little bit small on a map, but that's about 6,000 dwellings worth of land. So, so we've set up those, those little highways for people to walk on and cycle on from day one, uh, at least plan for them. Uh, and then you get to the detailed planning. So I, I would say the big picture planning is, is almost a given when, when you get to it. It's quite a, quite a bit of work, uh, but, but here's where you have the real arguments because to be friendly for pedestrians, it means you're challenging a lot of standards which tend to be built around vehicles. And some of the things we've worked on are the creation of these blisters which shorten up the gap from curb to curb for pedestrians. So you're looking at instead of what can be 10 plus metres uh, or nine, 9 plus metres for people to cross, they're looking at more about 5.5 metres which is really just the, the two lanes of, of vehicles. Uh, Part, part of that means you've got to go and challenge the displays that the engineers, council engineers, have been working to forever and a day. So we did all these grand plans with the strategic planners, but it all comes down to the engineers in the end. Uh, follow through on planning, I, I would have to say, I, again, we, we make great plans, developers make terrific plans, and then we get to bricks and sticks and forget them. So we've created loops of, of review and monitoring and, and stick to it. Some of the key initiatives at a sort of more grassroots level, we've got a very active community development program at Oran Park Town. And these are just a few of the samples that I've picked out that the program runs relative to the health space. Uh, in terms of the following through on social plan, uh, again, I've just selected a couple of things, but we issue a brochure to people about getting around at Oran Park Town so that they've, they've got something other than car dependence in the top of mind. Uh, and also our youth plan is specifically aimed quite often at youth activities, getting them out, out from their little games of whatever it is. I've, I was going to say Doom, but I think Doom uh, was... <laughs> well, we might know what Doom is, but uh, these guys don't. Uh, integrated Primary Healthcare Centre, I really wanted to give this a better run than I've, I've got for the time available. Uh, the idea here is that we get early on, as early as possible, a one-stop shop uh, for primary health. Uh, and by that, it, it is a one-stop shop. So you can't just co-locate, uh, you have to collaborate. Uh, and we've got a lot of uh, good partnerships going with UWS, uh, Local Health Division and Medicare Local. And that'll be open in 2014. Uh, 21st Century Living, this is about bringing density into the town centre without making it uh, three-storey walk-ups. 
and this is what I'd finish on. In terms of the future, uh, and this is, this is a real new space for me, smart work, smart work centres. And I've pinched this image from the Hub Melbourne uh, website. Uh, but, but it's the similar sort of thinking. This goes to technology providing us all the opportunity to work anywhere so that it's not so much where you do your work as what you're doing for work. And I'll really just leave it there. <laughs>